and welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. My guest this evening is Nicole Critella, who is a representative of a nonprofit, and we're going to talk about all the cool events and all the upcoming st stuff that they have regarding the nonprofit. Nicole, welcome. Thank you, Pete. How nice are you? I'm fantastic. Good to see you. Thank you. You Good too. To see you too. So tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the organization. Sure. Well, so as you know, um, I'm a Madison native. Mm -hmm. um, grew up doing gymnastics in Madison okay. and um, at Hand High School. Yeah. And a very good friend of mine from who I met in those days of, of Madison Park and Rec Gymnastics, Elizabeth Schumann, um, has cystic fibrosis. And a couple of years ago, I had moved back to the area. I had been living in Vermont for a number of years. I had moved back to the area and um, had sort of lost sight of, of fitness in my world. And I happened to see her running on Middle Beach Road in Madison, and yeah. I hadn't seen her for 17 years. We went our own ways after college, and or after high school and, and post-college, and had maintained our friendship through Facebook, but hadn't seen her, and literally um, was taking my children for a drive down a, a road, a beautiful road in Madison where I used to run, and we ran into Liz Schumann. And, um, we reconnected then, that was in 2010, and since then, I had built a house, we built a house in Clinton and okay. established our family in Clinton, um, and rekindled this friendship. Um, a couple of years later, um, I had thought about getting back into fitness again, and um, really started doing what was right for fitness, um, eating very clean, uh, working out regularly, and started dabbling a little bit with running. Um, that was in March of 2013. Okay. So not, not too long ago, about two years ago. All right. Um, and Liz had been one of my biggest fans all along. She's this absolute sunshine person, positive energy, positive sunlight, um, and everything she does always sees the silver lining in everything she does. And um, I had been doing a Great Strides Walk with her, which is an event sponsored by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation sure. to raise awareness for CF. Yeah. And um, if, do you know about CF? I don't know you about don't. CF. So CF is a genetic disease. Um, it is life-threatening. There's currently no cure for CF. Um, it affects about 30,000 people in the United States, about 70,000 people internationally. Um, both parents have to be carriers of cystic fibrosis in order for their children to have it. Um, and the chances of children um, having cystic fibrosis are about one in four. Um, so what it does, it impacts the, um, the lungs primarily, the, the lungs, the GI, um, and in some cases the sinuses as well. Um, it causes an excess of this very, very sticky mucus building up in the lungs. Okay which makes it really hard to breathe. Um, people with cystic fibrosis spend hours each day doing treatment to clear their lungs. Um, the treatment includes a percussion vest with a nebulizer, so she can she um, breathes and the idea is to cough and cough the mucus and move everything that's in her lungs so it doesn't settle and get infected. Um, so Liz, with this, this life-threatening lung illness, um, had, is a runner. She, she um, when I saw her at this Great Strides Walk, you know, in May of 2013, um, I had told her I just started running for the first time really in my life. And um, she said, well, let's run a half marathon together. And I looked at this beautiful woman and thought, you know, if she's gonna do it, of course I'll do it. And meanwhile, I'm terrified. <laughs> I've never run so far in my life. And um, I agreed. And that summer she got really sick, which required several hospitalizations. We call them tune-ups, um, usually treatment for, of antibiotics, and a lot of extra treatments for her lungs for her airway clearance. And I started running, and I kept thinking, oh my gosh, you know, she's in the hospital. Um, we're the same age, uh, mm -hmm. we're about a month apart in age, and we live such different lives. You know, I have very healthy, happy kids, right. and she's in the hospital. You know, I'm out, you know, practicing or running and, and, you know, prioritizing fitness, and she's struggling to breathe. So I kept running and running and running, <laughs> and um, that fall I had decided that I would run my first marathon, my first full marathon, okay. and I was afraid to tell her because she had inspired me and we had talked about running this half marathon together. Um, but I was I was worried, you know, if just sort of the emotional impact of, of that, because here it was her idea, and now I'm sort of surpassing that idea and continuing. And one night over dinner, she said, well, how's running? How's your half marathon training going? And I said, well, I think I'm going to run a full marathon. And she jumped up, and she hugged me, and she celebrated with me, and um, just really um, the epitome of, of a true friend who was happy for my success. 
And um, so I ran the Hartford Marathon, and that was 10 months after I started getting back into fitness. So okay. in, in 10 months, I had lost about 70 pounds okay. and run a full marathon. And the whole time, I kept giving her credit for it. In my mind, I kept thinking, gosh, I wish I could show people um, what an inspiration she is to me. I wish there was a way that I could communicate what she has done for me. And um, certainly, there were a lot of people in my journey who were supportive and who kept saying, you know, I'm watching you um, on this journey, and I'm so proud of what you've done. And I kept thinking, there's got to be a way to pay this forward. So that was in October of, of 2013. and. Um, that winter, I kept those thoughts just couldn't, they just wouldn't go away. Mm -hmm. And um, I kept thinking, you know, there's got to be something in those miles. Because I know when I run and I have all those miles behind me, um, a lot of magic happens in my own head. You know, there's exactly. a lot of reflection, a lot of thinking. I always, you know, I solve all my problems when I'm running. <laughs> it's my time. Yeah. And, um, I kept thinking there's got to be a way. So I was training for my next marathon, my second marathon, and it was April, April 4th, 2000, um, 2014. And I thought, you know, it was a Thursday afternoon. Liz again was in the hospital. Yeah. And I thought, you know, there's, I wonder if I could bring my friends together and use Facebook to celebrate Liz. I wonder if I could ask my friends um, to let me talk about their miles on Facebook, sort of brag. You know runners, runners right. like to talk about their runs. Of course. And um, so that night I, I texted about 20 of my friends and I said, hey, would you just do me a favor and let me know when you run, how many miles, and I'd like to post every day on Facebook, hey, my friends and I ran 10 miles for you, Liz. And one of those, those women said, well, you know, why don't you start a group on Facebook, which I knew nothing about. Right. And 12 hours later, Outrun the Odds uh, was born on Facebook. Hey. And I texted Liz in the hospital and I said, guess what, I have a surprise. You need to go on Facebook and check this out. And she did, laying in, in her hospital bed. She has a, a pick line for her mm -hmm. antibiotics mm -hmm. because sure. she's resistant to oral antibi antibiotics right. these days. So um, she's laying on her hospital bed and we're just texting and we're watching this group just explode under, you know, in front of our eyes. And people are posting, I just ran five miles for you, Liz. Feel better. I'm so proud of you, Liz. Um, and my initial goal was 3,800 miles to celebrate her 38th birthday. Mm -hmm. um, 38 at the time was her life expectancy. Wow. So she was literally outrunning the odds. Um, she lives with cystic fibrosis related diabetes, which mm -hmm. in its, of itself is its own challenge. Um, she spends about four hours a day um, working on clearing her lungs. She takes countless medications. She's had to limit her, her professional career. She's a, um, a therapist by, by profession um, at the Grove School in Madison. Mm -hmm. And the sacrifices that she makes for this are tremendous. So um, my, I really wanted to celebrate her 38th birthday. Well, her 38th birthday was until September, and this was April. Duh. So the goal was 3,800 miles and maybe raise some money. I was horrible about asking people for money. I couldn't <laughs> fundraise for anything. So, but I could ask people to run and to get healthy. And that was a Friday, a Friday morning. And by Friday night, we had 1,000 people join our group. Wow. By Sunday, so 48 hours later, we had run 1,000 miles. And I used to sit every night and I'd, I'd count the miles by hand. I had a journal and I would write down, mm -hmm. You know, Pete Mazzetti just ran one mile. Good there, job, Pete. There you and go. then I would add them all up every night and post a total. Wow. Um, on day nine, mm -hmm. we hit that 3,800 mile mark. We ran 3,800 miles in nine days. And we knew at that point that this was going to be something um, much bigger than just a Facebook group. Exactly. So, how's she doing? Very well. She actually just spent two weeks in the hospital. She just um, is, came out on Sunday. And, you know, we were commenting on how she had a, a really healthy stretch. Um, the, her last hospitalization was last August, okay. um, which means that she was taking pretty good care of herself. Mm -hmm. um, one of the um, critical components of living with cystic fibrosis is yep. nutrition. And regulating nutrition for CFers, as we call them, is really tricky. Um, their bodies don't absorb nutrition, nutrients, and vitamins and, and um, nutrients the way ours do. So she's very en um, enzyme dependent in order to get her nutrition. Um, so that coupled with CF-related diabetes mm -hmm. meant she was constantly struggling to maintain a healthy weight right. and a healthy diet. So um, in fact, this hospitalization included a, what's called a PEG tube, which is a feeding tube um, that she'll use for hopefully Mm -hmm. um, in a temporary situation right. to regulate her, her calories and, and get her up to a really healthy place where she can get back into running because it sort of, um, sort of 
put a damper on her on her yeah, running. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so she's doing well. She's. She, I'll tell you, she is the the most optimistic person you've ever met. Um, she sees the silver lining in every single thing she does. So this entire hospitalization, um, you know, every day is just very positive, and she's constantly saying, "Well, you know." You know, I'm laying in my hospital bed, but I think I'm going to ride the bicycle tomorrow. I've asked them to bring a bicycle in there into my room. So she lives with a really positive attitude that we've we've tried to um, just really maintain and, and lead with on Outrun the Odds. Um, you know, I mentioned that in nine days we hit this huge milestone. Um, we had um, a man named Brian Thomas approach me after about four days who said, you know, I'm a race director. You're a running organization. Mm -hmm. You should have a 5K event right. um, to promote awareness for cystic fibrosis. And I said, well, who is this guy? You know, I don't know this person. And he had met Liz years ago through a, cyst a different cystic fibrosis um, event. And his cousin had passed away from the disease. And his cousin, Sharon Thomas, who, um, carried a lot of the same traits as Liz does. So a lot of similar similarities okay. and, and I think he really connected with Liz in memory of his, his cousin Sharon. So immediately he and I sort of took over, what can this be? Um, and we watched as, as these people just latched on to our story um, and they really, it was this most positive community. community. Um, and we knew uh, by June, so yep. a couple months later, we knew uh, that we needed to, to really consider a nonprofit organization. Okay. Um, so we, with everything we've done with Outrun, it seems mm -hmm. as though as when we ask somebody for something um, or for help, the doors are wide open. Exactly. Um, you know, we, we contacted a friend who said, well, I know a whole bunch of pro bono attorneys. I'll get you connected with one. Um, and Joan Wilson, right in Clinton, mm -hmm. um, sure. was um, thrilled to be part of this organization. Um, and Joan sat with us immediately and helped us um, I really expedite the process to become a 501c3 charity. Right. So in the first four months of the organization, we went from, you know, a simple act of kindness for a friend mm -hmm. to a 501c3 charity. Um, with at that point, it had become thousands of members wow. running thousands of miles. Um, the beauty of the organization, what we were learning, was not so much in the fundraising that was happening, right. um, but it was really in the people who were choosing to get fit. They were seeing Liz as an inspiration. And we have people who, who said, you know, I've never run, but if Liz can run, I can run. Right. And people who looked at me and said, Nicole, you know, if you can lose 70 pounds and go from overweight Mm -hmm. baseball mom, you know, you're you know, a typical, per a typical mom, exactly. um, I can do that too. Right. So um, we had these people suddenly showing up and running their first mile and then saying, and then running their second mile. And um, my mom, you know my mom. Oh, sure. She started running when she was um, in her 60s. I won't reveal right, exactly okay. how old she okay. is. All right. <laughs> um, but she ran her first mile because of this organization. And um, she ran a 5K um, event. Yep. And then she ran a, the Turkey Trot in Madison. She ran a five mile mm -hmm. event. And um, so here are these people that had never had any interest in running um, who are showing up. And they're all over the world. Nice. We now have people in 65 countries. Would you mind hanging around for another segment? I'd love to. We'll be right back. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her, though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You don't, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. The beat smallest beat moments beat can have the biggest beat impact beat on a child's beat life. Beat a little bit rowdy. R-O-W-D-Y. Take time to be a dad today. Time. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. Sitting here with Nicole Cartella. Nicole, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for, st thanks for sticking around. So we were talking in the first segment about the organization and about your friend Liz. I was wondering if we can maybe pick up from the conversation. Sure. 
So um, I had started to mention, you know, we, we've grown to this international organization now. Right. Um, we started to see people post in uh, Korea. A, a friend, Jeff Kasner, from, from childhood um, posted from Korea one day. And, and we started to see um, people from all over the world um, who were joining, joining us. Right. Um, we, through this whole process, met um, a bunch of people with cystic fibrosis in Australia. Um, we have actually a, a significant following, thanks to our, our CF moms, as they call themselves, <laughs> in Australia. Australia, um, and we started to see the awareness for cystic fibrosis really take off. Okay. Um, as an orphan disease, there is no federal funding that's specified for cystic fibrosis, which means all of the research that's done for treatment and a cure for the disease mm -hmm. happens through private funding. Right. And that to me was a huge problem. The fact that people were dying all over the world from this disease, and the, the reality was that it was just because of money. Um, so I, I thought very heavily or very significantly, I thought, you know, we need to make all of these miles equal something because mm -hmm. Pete, in 14 months, outrun the odds, has run more than 340,000 miles. Oh 340,000 miles in just over a year. Wow. So we needed to make this mean something or right. we need to make this mean something and that's really our mission at this point is how do we turn those miles into money um, and, and we are fundraising um, for sure. We have a lot of, we have a lot of attention. We have a lot of, um, we're very thankful to Vertex Pharmaceuticals which is actually um, right now the leader in CF, aware, or CF research and treatment. Okay. Um, Vertex has now two drugs um, that really halt the progression of the disease. So there's very promise, a very promising future for people with cystic fibrosis. Um, Dr. John Koff, who's the director of the Adult Cystic Fibrosis Clinic at Yale University, um, who I work very closely with, um, had shared with me some research last week when I met with him, um, that a child born in the year 2010 mm -hmm. um, now has a life expectancy of 56 which is tremendously significant given um, when Liz was diagnosed, she was seven. Um, that was in 1983. And um, she was, her life expectancy was 12. So the progression of the research has really led to longer, healthier lives for people with cystic fibrosis. Um, so our mission very, very clearly became awareness. We need people to know about this. We want people to talk about this. Um, we want people, um, to live healthy, um, as Liz says, you know, she lives healthy, sick. You know, she lives a very, very full life um, with a pretty significant disease. Um, so our mission has become um, to raise as much awareness as we can through a number of different events, through fitness events, through family events. Um, we host every year to celebrate Elizabeth's uh, birthday. We host a birthday gala, which is one of our bigger fundraisers um, of the year. And we, after a lot of research and a lot of conversation with so many helpful people within the community, um, decided that it made the most sense to really start locally and to support, um, support sort of the grassroots organization that we are, and that meant going to Yale. Right. That meant looking at what was necessary um, for adults living with cystic fibrosis because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things Liz said from the start is, you know, cystic fibrosis was a pe has always been a pediatric illness. Right. You know, the bottom line was kids just weren't surviving this. Um, you know, 30 years ago, if you had cystic fibrosis, you died of pneumonia, um, and there really wasn't treatment. Liz will tell you she's one of the lucky ones. You know, she's just, as I said, she just keeps outrunning her own odds. Um, but now what we're seeing is more and more adults with cystic fibrosis. And so we thought it really important um, to create as healthy an environment as we, could, we can. We know they're going to spend some time in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so when we approached uh, Dr. Koff, um, he shared with us that the bulk of the funding for um, treatment um, was going still towards pediatrics and that he could use some support um, with respiratory care, for example, with nutrition, um, with a physical therapy, um, with cardio equipment. So one of the ways that we're um, looking to sponsor is through the use of, of bicycles and, and possibly treadmills, um, which coincides really nicely yeah, with, with who we right. are mm -hmm. exactly. as an organization. So what are some of the other events that you guys do throughout the year to raise money and raise awareness? Sure. You know, we've always been a running base organization. Right. Um, it's where we started. That was the, the uh, initial inspiration. Um, so we focus on events, and we, we're working to a, a quarterly model where every quarter um, we have a running base event locally for now. Um, our hope really is to, to spread beyond the Connecticut boundaries, as I've said. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I told you that we have um, people, runners in all 50 states in addition oh, to 60 countries. 
countries, all 50 this. states, wow. um, and we have almost 5,900 people oh my who God. are part of this organization, just in the Facebook, just in Facebook. So um, there, there are huge pockets of outrunners, as we yeah. call them, um, all over the country. Uh, so we'd love to branch out from the Connecticut shoreline um, mm -hmm. and move into Boston, for example, out to California, for example, into Florida. I mean, we have, we have outrunners everywhere. Um, so we'd love to move some of these running base events um, to those, those locations. And I was going to say, I, I see by doing research, you guys have an event coming up in Brantford. We do. And you guys have an event coming up in Madison. Can you tell us a little bit about the ideas of where both of those events came up? Sure. Um, you know, the the 5K event, which is the annual event that happens in Madison, okay. um, really was was that initial, um, you know, Brian coming to me and saying, let's have a, a running event. And, yeah. you know, last August we did this event and um, we hoped for 100 people. Um, as I was mentioning to you earlier, you know, it seems as though these doors just keep opening wide for us. Exactly. Um, we needed a location and the congregational church said, come here um, and, and, um, and another, yes, and, and we'll help you and use our lawn. And, and um, so we had this event in the pouring rain. We hoped for 100 Ooh, people, Pete, in the rain. and we had 175 people sign up. I'm sorry, 275 people sign up wow. before the event even happened. And then that morning, pouring rain, and we had a line just up meeting, um, what is it, Meeting Place Hill, or Meeting Place Road, right downtown yep. in Madison. Mm -hmm. um, we had a line of people waiting to register, oh and we God. had over 420 people race that day and they all said you know thank you for for this inspiration a lot of the people things that people like about us Pete um, it's this friendship you right. know Liz is the sort of the sister friend who knows what I'm thinking without saying it exactly. and we finish each other's sentences um, you know we spent years doing gymnastics together which I think when you you get to know someone in that environment you always know them that, oh, them yeah. that well and um, so the the five k really turned us on to the idea that we could have some run you know we could have some fitness based events and see um, really uh, we could see support um, and we have people who that day who drove from Massachusetts to come to our event we had some people fly from California to come to that event um, so we looked to grow and um, Liz was never able yet to run a full marathon okay. um, she had trained up for one and unfortunately her cystic fibrosis line lines her from that event a couple of years ago um, but she's run several half marathons oh, so that really has kind of become her distance and we decided the next way we're going to honor Liz is through a half marathon. And we have one of those coming up in Brantford, I believe, in about two weeks. Yeah, about two say, weeks. Yes. In the near future. In the near future, yes. Um, we have um, it's 13.1 miles. Right. For, for, so we have a lot of people who are training to do this for their first time, um, and I think that's going to be really the magic on that day. I can't tell you. The big surprise, but I can tell you that Liz, is, Liz was training for this event, okay. and with her recent hospitalization, um, we had to sort of break it to her that, you know what, you're not going to be healthy enough to run this event this month. Right. Um, May is Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Month, okay. um, so the timing of this, this is very intentional, mm -hmm. and um, as Liz was in the hospital and sort of preparing for her next medical intervention, she said, get me across that finish line. Can right. you do this? And of course I can do this. Yeah, it's sort of, of my, my job to exactly. fulfill her dreams, you right. know? Um, so I can't tell you how, but I can tell you um, that what we've put together will be a remarkable surprise. Um, and Liz will cross the finish line after 13.1 miles that day. So Really? That's coming up, yeah. So I trust the day, the day of the event in Brantford, you're not running. You're going to be too busy organizing. Part of the surprise. <laughs> all right. I can't tell you all of it. All right. um, I'm not running the entire course. I can tell you that much. But um, I do. Um, I do spend a lot of time working very hard on those events. You okay. know, I'm so lucky. Um, the Liz has always said for years and years and years. She's always said it takes a village to take care of Elizabeth. Right. Um, she has so many people who show up when when she needs it. And Outrun has really. Um, been sort of this 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 model of, of who Liz is, you mm -hmm. know. Um, people have said, "How can I help? What can I do?" So, going into this race, is Brian? I mentioned Brian as a race director. Um, he has taken a very solid lead in in uh, with the race itself, um, and he's working with Sound Runner and Branford with Preston Ranton very closely. Mm -hmm. um, and the two of them have done a remarkable job of taking care of all of these little details. Um, 
Brian and I recently, in terms of the organization, had sort of divvied up some of the responsibilities because we both work full time. Right. You know, I'm a, I'm a full time literacy specialist at Eastline Middle School. Mm -hmm. I have two small kids, so um, making time for all that Outrun can be is one of the biggest challenges in my life. Um, so Brian has taken the lead with the race and allowed me to really explore. Um, our new merchandise and apparel organization, um, mm -hmm. or that, that side of our organization, yep. um, which is explosive and we're grateful to Backward Pipe who has come in and they, they um, actually are outrunners. Um, okay. They're a family, um, a small family owned business locally and they came to us and said, you know, we were part of your group and we want to help you guys. And um, so Brian's involvement with the race has really allowed me to take over in that, that role. Um, so as we look towards this, this event, we have sponsors from all over the shoreline who are stepping up. Um, we have an awesome, awesome committee putting the event together. So that day, I will be doing a little bit of everything. Right. Um, I'll probably be doing a lot of talking and a lot of smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do you see the future for the organization? Where are you guys going? Oh, big question. Um, you know, I, I mentioned my two small kids. Yeah. Um, at one point, they've each said to me, you know, I said to them one day, you know, someday Outrun can be yours. And they said, really? You know, Outrun's not going to end. And um, I said, no, you know, Outrun is, is not going to end because yeah. our goal um, originally was to find a cure, to support a cure for cystic right. fibrosis um, and to raise enough awareness um, that we could raise enough money to, to support that initiative and right. support the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and all of the research that's be, being done mm -hmm. internationally. Um, what we've found with Outrun is really we're, we've kind of grown beyond cystic fibrosis. You know, people are so proud to take action. Um, people say, you know, I think when we see someone, you know, we've all seen um, children with cancer, for example. We've all right. seen we've all seen families who are suffering, mm -hmm. and I think often we don't know what to say. You know, we don't yeah. know what to do. Exactly. Um, people always feel like they need to write a check, they need to donate, and what we've realized throughout Run is that. People just need to do something, exactly. and we have given them an action to take. They can run, they can log their miles, mm -hmm. they can we, they can join this community, they can get healthy for themselves, um, and they're taking an action that's not financial for them. Um, so as we continue to grow, um, you know, Outrun will always be there for these people to support them in their missions. You know, two weeks ago. Um, I, re I ran the Providence Marathon. It was my fourth full marathon, 26.2 mm -hmm. miles. And we had a team of um, 10 outrunners. Okay. Four of these people ran for the very first time. They, wow. they ran the, the full marathon for the very first time. Um, and each of them had, had said to me at one point or another, I'll, you know, I'm not going to run a full marathon. That's crazy. <laughs> you know? Well, you know what? And on that note, I just want to thank you for coming down, and hopefully we'll have you on again. It'd be fantastic. All right. It'd be fantastic. On behalf of Nicole, I'm Pete. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next week.